Hello, my name is Sarah Glennie, and I'm a fourth semester student and the intervener for Deafblind Persons program at George Brown College in Toronto. The topic of my intervener talk, Vineland, is Deafblind Intervention with Emergent Communicators When You're in a Hurry. Sometimes I hear people say we're too busy cooking, cleaning, and giving medications to do intervention. Here are eight practical ideas for how you can guarantee quality intervention when you're under pressure. One, prioritize. Is it more important to you to get the person out the door on time or to do with, not for? You have to make that small decision for yourself because it will influence all your other decisions. Number two, manage your time. Are you in a hurry because you are having a bad day? One of my teachers advised me, if I'm in a hurry, it's because I didn't manage my time well enough to allow the other person to do things in their own way. Allow extra time for the person to process information, adapt to new situations, and for things to um, go differently than planned. Three, manage the environment. Consider the proximity of the rooms to each other which flow of movement works best? Are there barriers that could be adapted? Make the environment as pleasant as possible to encourage participation. For example, if toilet is an issue, does the bathroom smell nice? Four, communicate, work as a team. When making appointments, let the receptionist know about the person's specific needs, discuss rescheduling policies, and make a reservation at a less busy time. Communicate with the individual who is deafblind themselves. Remember, communication is information. And this leads to a reduction in frustration, which consequently leads to a reduction in behaviors. Routine and consistency are forms of communication for emergent communicators. If you change the routine or the team is inconsistent in their intervention, the person could become confused. Calendar systems, tangible symbols, touch, object, and environmental cues are simple tools that can help the person comprehend. Five, if behaviors are hindering the activity, step back and analyze the root cause of the behaviors rather than continuing to force the person to do the task. The five main causes of behaviors are one, physical, medical, and emotional, two, attention eliciting, three, object or activity eliciting, four, avoidance or escape, and five, sensory or pleasurable. Determining the specific cause will help you develop more appropriate solutions in addressing the behavior. Six, Increase motivation for unpleasant tasks. Have a specific toy that can only be played with in the washroom. If the person doesn't like brushing their teeth, what about using an electric toothbrush so they can feel the vibration? Have a pre preferred um, item ready when you're waiting in a waiting room so you can deal with those boring or uncomfortable medical visits. Seven, be prepared. Have activities ready so you don't lose the person's attention while you set up. Use cubbies to store items in easy access. Keep drawers organized and labeled so you can quickly find objects. Eight, if the person can't do something independently, try involving them in small ways. If they can't brush their hair themselves, try using hand under hand. Offering choices is another way to involve them. Letting someone choose their shirt should not take a lot of time out of the day. Give them the choice of what order to do things in. They could help by holding or moving an object, such as holding the tube of toothpaste while you close the cap. Let's review. The eight tips for intervening under pressure are, one, prioritize, two, time management, three, environmental management, four, communication, five, analyze the root cause of the problem, six, motivate, seven, prepare, and eight, involve in small ways.
staff illness or shortages add pressure to the team, but don't let those problems become excuses. I hope you find these tips helpful in guaranteeing quality intervention when you're in a hurry. Your actions directly affect the quality of someone's life.